Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this week's Wargaming Terrain tutorial, our first one for the year. We're actually going to be looking at making some Wasteland Scatter Terrain. Uh, now this terrain could be adapted to any sort of setting that you're looking for, uh, but I think you'll find this has got some very helpful tips no matter what sort of scene you're trying to build. I uh, hope you enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe if you do, and let's get stuck straight into it. Alright guys, for this project today I'm going to be using just some XPS foam here. Uh, now I have two thicknesses, uh, there's a 30mm or inch and a quarter, and also a 50mm or two inch uh, block that I've got here. These were offcuts that I had from previous projects, but you can cut them down just off the off the sheet if you like. Uh, now I'm using this hot wire foam cutter, you don't need to use this sort of thing. I mean this is a real cheap one you can grab on Amazon. I think this one cost me about $19 Australian, so they're not expensive at all. All I'm doing here is just cutting uh, very roughly, so I want these wavy sort of lines in these cuts. So there's no precision required for this at all. So that's why I say, you know, even a craft knife will achieve a similar result. Now with these cuts, one of these sides will be exposed uh, as our sort of rock face. Now you can use obviously these uh, off cuts that I've got here that I'm sort of also cutting out uh, as rock faces. Like I said, only one side of this foam that we're cutting here is going to be exposed uh, once we finish the project. So make sure you maximize the foam that you've got here and uh, you know, keep up as uh, keep as many of those little pieces and cut them out. Just in case you want to put them on the bases as well, I found that having more than one sort of rock face for each base worked well. So having one large and, and one smaller one towards the back of the base or around the side uh, really adds to the effect. So uh, you don't need to sort of, I've sort of beveled some of those edges for these to just sort of get the back of the rock face a little bit lower. You don't need to do that. It, these are just really rough. So you you really just got to wing this, um, cut them out. doesn't really matter how, uh, what shapes you use, whether they're, you know, uh, concave rock faces or, or um, curved rock faces. It really doesn't matter. Here I'm just using the uh, whole wire foam cutter to put some lines and some different texture on these rock faces. I hadn't tried this before, so this was just an experiment. It turned out okay. I, I don't mind it. I didn't do it on any of the others. Just preferred the fairly clean sort of straight rock face, but you can go at this with anything, you know, uh, you know, texture it with uh, rocks or, or a ball of tin foil. Use the hot wire foam cutter like I have there or just a craft knife will work fine. Now obviously using the larger 50mm or 2 inch uh, block of foam you'll get a much higher rock face but again don't be limited too much by what you've got. Uh, you can obviously glue different parts of this together so you could glue, glue two blocks together and make a you know really high rock face if you wanted to. Uh, you'll find in some of the finished products I did I actually glued some smaller pieces to the top of some of my rock faces. Uh, this just gave it a little bit of extra level. And you'll see here what I'm doing is, uh, again, just a bit of an experiment while I was going just to see if I could make a tall sort of rock spire uh, with this hot wire foam cutter. Worked worked a treat. Uh, I did end up using a couple of these in the build today. Uh, and you will see me try out a few different things throughout this video here. So this one again, I've just kept one uh, the bottom surface flat, obviously, so that it'll mount onto my base nice and easily. Uh, and I'll uh, have plenty of contact points for the glue. And again, I'm just going in and sort of getting some rough cuts around those edges there. Like I said, uh, try to use as much of this excess foam as you've got. You'll obviously have some bits to throw away, but there's a lot there that you can use from just, as you can see, I've just used a couple of small squares and I'm going to have, you know, tons of stuff to use here. Don't be too sort of uh, strict on any of the measurements or anything like that. This is meant to be sort of natural or organic sort of terrain, so it doesn't need to be uh, neat or uh, measured, you know, properly or anything. I mean, if you're using it specifically for cover terrain, you might want to just make sure that uh, it is going to serve that purpose once you get it built up on the base. But you'll find throughout this video, uh, most of the materials I use, uh, apart from this XPS foam, are pretty easy to get at your hands on. I know some people do have trouble finding XPS foam, but you might find another way to do this with a different material. This XPS foam, if you can get it, uh, is really worthwhile. Best to buy it in the sheets from the hardware store if you can. And uh, this hot wire foam cutter, like I said, really cheap and it really does make this process a lot quicker for you. So cutting it with the knife works so just as well and is fine, but uh, I just found, uh, you know, it's a lot safer with the hot wire foam cutter for a start. 
and it also like I said like quite a bit quicker now this one here you'll see it uh, it does have some uh, pine bark on the base here I will cover over that uh, shortly in the video but I just wanted to quickly show you here using the craft knife to sort of get some different uh, textures in here it's a good idea to sort of chip some of this away as well uh, here you'll see me putting uh, the hot glue down for the bases uh, now this stuff uh, melts really easily so if you've got a hot high temperature hot glue gun uh, you'll find that this might melt this XPS foam really quickly so if that's the case for you I would suggest not using hot glue and just use PVA to get this down on the bases you can use just about anything for these bases uh, anything from cereal box cardboard uh, chipboard like I've used there or also um, MDF will work fine. I found chipboard was the best, just one millimeter cardboard. You can cut this to any sort of shape and just using your scissors, it's really easy to put together. So there you can see it's all done. Uh, you would have seen just in that previous clip me putting some pine bark down on that rock spire. This was just another experiment. I just wanted to try out something different um, while I was working through this. So. Uh, you will see that through the video uh, as it gets sort of painted and textured uh, it will show up but uh, here what I'm doing is just making the uh, mounds for the back of these rock faces out of tin foil. Now you would have seen me do a very similar thing here uh, as I'm doing here with the rubble piles which I'll put a link to the video above for you. Uh, it's just pressing this tin foil down into the shapes or into the areas you need it to fill and uh, just simple hot glue again will put this in place. You want to try and press it down as hard as you can because you really don't want that tin foil to be lifting or moving too much, uh, especially uh, considering uh, what we're going to be using to cover that. So not a lot of flexibility in the uh, sculptor mold, which I'll be showing you here. Now this sculptor mold I'm using is just homemade. It's really easy to do. If you got yourself a blender, uh, you can use uh, toilet paper, tissue paper, anything like that, just blend it up. Uh, add in a bunch of uh, plaster of Paris is what I use so really cheap for a three kilo bag I think it's about four or five dollars so not expensive at all uh, and it works fine you can buy I have bought a, a bag of sculptor mold myself um, just to sort of get that comparison but I found this stuff works so well in the last time I used it I, I didn't want to throw it out or just let it sit there and not, not do anything so I'm just using my homemade stuff here again uh, it works fine just add a little bit of water in there with about a cup of the sculptor mold mix to start with and uh, you don't want to get too much of it out all at once so I just went through about a cup at a time and it's about a 50-50 mix with the water and you want it to sort of be that consistency uh, you know you probably would have seen it around YouTube before uh, it's around about the consistency of cottage cheese or something so it's not runny but it's also uh, it's not too firm so you want to be able to you know sort of press this around and smooth it out and things like that so if you find it's getting a little bit uh, out of hand or it's a little bit dry as you're, as you're shaping it, just uh, grab some water, uh, put some water on your hand and you should still be able to work with that for quite some time. Now uh, with these cardboard bases I was a little bit worried about warping and things like that but honestly I didn't have too much trouble at all. Uh, you'll see these bases are all pretty good. Uh, the one benefit of having this sort of um, cardboard base uh, as you'll see soon is that it is actually still flexible so uh, if it does warp a little bit you'll be able to push it back uh, bend it around and get it back to the shape it should be so uh, here I'm just sanding off some of the pointier parts of this mold so uh, the main reason for doing that is you want the surface to be fairly smooth and, and like you'll see there I didn't I didn't sand that very hard at all uh, you just want to get it so that there's no parts that can kind of break off because what that'll do is actually show through the, the you know stark white of the the plaster so I uh, just put a little bit of uh, PVA glue around the edges of the cardboard this was just to try and help stop it from fraying when I put on the rest of these textures because they are a little bit watery I'm using my black paint and Mod Podge with water mix there just to sort of fill in all the holes. You want that to be fairly runny because you want it to sort of sit down. It will absorb really well into the plaster. Just don't want any of those white parts showing through, especially if you've got little, you know, bubbles or anything in the plaster. Now I base coated those uh, with some uh, burnt umber or burnt sienna it might have been. Um, now they don't look very attractive at that point, but don't worry, we will cover all of this up. I just wanted a something a little bit closer to the final color uh, before I started putting on these this sand and texture so here I'm using some uh, dry pigment now these Landridge pigments are really good to buy there uh, the series one of theirs are really cheap uh, you get about four times as much as you would with a Vallejo pigment 
for around about the same price. So if you've got an art store nearby, just go in and talk to them about those Landridge pigments and uh, you should, I'll put a link in the description actually to the website so you can have a look at the different range of colors. But I found mixing that in with the playground sand I bought at the hardware store really sort of changed the color of that sand and made it more that desert wasteland kind of color that I was looking for. Now you would have seen in my previous video uh, where I've mixed that sand up with some of the uh, brown battleground from Army Painter. This just gives a really nice kind of variation to textures in the sand. So you get a little bit of uh, fine gravel mixed in with the sand, a little bit of rocks. Uh, this really does make a difference uh, to the overall look. So because if you just use the plain sand, it's really fine and it, it sort of it's a bit plain. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of variation in the terrain at all. So. Uh, using some little rocks or pebbles or gravel, anything like that uh, to mix in with that sand uh, before you mix in the pigment will make a huge difference. Now uh, these are some little lava rocks. Uh, I found these actually at the landscaping center. Um, they had a little jar of them for sale for a couple of dollars. These worked out really well. In the end I didn't really need to even paint these or color them but I felt like the texture on these because they're kind of a, you know a bubbled rock I guess. Uh, they look really cool. And uh, like I said, they're the, the right color for this terrain, so it means I don't have to worry too much about that either. Now what I've done is just glue those down with a large dob of uh, PVA glue. And now the reason I did it that way was just so that I could uh, then go back in with some more sand. Uh, this just kind of makes the rocks look a little bit more uh, embedded in the terrain rather than placed on top of it. And it's a good idea to do that just so that they don't sort of look like they've been placed there. They look like they belong there. Now I've just used a slightly lighter color here. You'll see, uh, I think it's a, a like a yellow ochre uh, mixed with a little bit of brown. And I'm just dry brushing this over the, the um, terrain here just to give it a slightly different uh, or slightly brighter look. So it was a little bit dark. Now you'll just, you'll be able to make that determination with your own terrain as to what color is perfect for you. Here I'm just using some twine and I've just pulled it apart and I'm just making some tiny little um, tumbleweeds. I did have a go at um, some coconut fiber for this but I found it was a little bit too thick and a little bit, it varied a lot in its uh, in the density of that coconut fiber so the, some of the strands are really quite wide and, and it didn't give a really good look for these uh, little tumbleweeds I wanted to add onto some of this terrain. So if you pull apart some of that uh, twine you'll find it works really well for these little tumbleweeds. You just roll them in the palm of your hand and it will give you uh, really cool little pieces uh, to add on to add that extra little bit of detail. Uh, I've just glued them on with some PVA glue. Now this stuff dries clear so it's perfect for this sort of thing and they'll still they'll sit on there well. I've used quite a few different uh, tufts of grass around these. Now I've basically there's no strict sort of rules as to you know what you should use here. I used some of these um, burnt sort of tufts here from Army Painter. I've also used um, some from Gamers Grass. Uh, I just found more variation was better. Obviously being wasteland terrain, you don't want anything that's too bright green. Um, you can get some really nice sort of desert looking tufts. Um, you'll see at the bottom of the screen there, I've actually got the mini tufts from Gamer Grass. They're really good because they're actually really small. So you can place a lot of those around and fill in some of the blank areas on your terrain. Now I've used these sort of trees before. I've used them in my tree making video uh, a while back, which I'll put a link to the, at the top of the screen. What I found was if you want to look for twigs to use for trees, um, the best thing I found for this was if you can find yourself a hedge, you know, or a small shrub or something and get a branch or a dead branch off that, or, you know, tear a couple of branches off and let them dry. These work perfectly for little trees uh, on your terrain. Now the great thing about it is you don't need to worry if you break them, which you probably will at some point. They might snap off or you might accidentally grab it and break it off. Um, the great thing is you just grab another one and glue it back into place. Uh, if you need to drill it into the, the terrain piece, you'll see me do that shortly. That first one I just placed up against the rock face. But what you will see me do shortly is just um, drill one in or drill a hole into the base uh, so that we can um, insert it in there on the top of the hill. It's a good idea to use quite a few of the little broken pieces as well to scatter them around. This really sort of started to bring the build together for me. I think adding the little twigs and the bits of uh, rock around, you know, extra little bits of rock and these twigs around the, the uh, terrain pieces really, really sold them in the end. I think it's what made the big difference to, to these pieces. So up until this point, I was feeling like they were really quite bland and plain. Even with the variation of grass tufts on there, I was still really sort of a bit disappointed with how it was all looking. But 
Uh, once I started adding in these, um, you know, these dead trees and dead limbs and stuff around the place, bits of sticks and things like that, it's really what sort of brings this together. So the one final thing I did was uh, with these twigs and branches and even the trees themselves, uh, I found they stood out quite a bit on the terrain. So they looked, you know, really nice and fresh in what was otherwise a really worn and deserty sort of scene. Uh, but a little bit of that dry pigment uh, just dusted on the, to these uh, around the bases of the trees as well. Just that extra dry pigment onto these, all these little branches really sort of set them into the scene and really made them look like they were a part of it. Again, just like the rocks, it made them look like they weren't placed in there. And as you can see here, these have really come together nicely. Uh, I made about four or five of these in the day that I did this project. So um, I was really happy with the overall outcome. Uh, nothing in this build was expensive or, or hard to get, certainly not here in Australia anyway. As you can see, these look really good. Um, they're going to look great on a table. They're the perfect size as well to sort of have as, uh, you know, ambush terrain and that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back very soon with another terrain video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to uh, support the channel to make sure that I can continue to make these videos, just head on over to Patreon. Uh, you can subscribe there for as little as a dollar and uh, you will help me continue to do what I'm doing here. So thank you very much for your time, guys, and I hope this has helped you in your terrain building. I'll see you in the next video.